Brian, Brian, stop the tape. Okay, Mike. Oh, wait, rewind that scene, please. Rewind that scene. 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 I'm Mike Rizzo. And I'm Brian Bonds. And this is the Rewind That Scene podcast. Yes. We go back Thanks in for time. In. Yes, thank you. We go back in time and kind of like dissect and talk about our favorite movies growing up as kids, the 80s, That's 90s, true. and 2000s. <laughs> yeah. It's a great time. Yeah. And we never really forget to have a laugh and share each other. <laughs> <laughs> and today we're drinking water because we are want to be healthy and we want to hydrate. So like we're being... To stay hydrated. <laughs> yeah, you got to stay hydrated, water. guys. Always drink the waters. Just not it's the true. canal in the Gowanus waters. Just real no, waters. No, yeah, it's mucky water. You'll, yeah. you'll mutate fast. Exactly. Speaking so, about mutants. <laughs> <laughs> this one we saw, you know, early on, 1987, The Gate. Ah, oh, an oh, amazing film. Break it down, wow. baby Bond. This film really gave us to shivers as kids. <laughs> and, you know, I, I really didn't realize how... Um, Big you know, shivers. throughout the film, yeah, like yeah. how scary it is, but also the, there's barely any parents in the movie. Like, you, well, yeah, I was gonna they're say there, that. but they're not there. It's kind of great because they leave within the first like 30 minutes, or not less than that, the first 10 minutes of the movie. They're like, all right, well, bye, and they just like leave. It's like it's, it's true, a golden setup to any type of horror movie, you know? Yes, and the main character Glenn is portrayed by the young Stephen Dorff. Yeah. Who went on to do other films when he got older and uh the kids are really great in this film um i mean so many cool different unique trick photography and, and special yes. tricks went into this right in, yes. in canada it looks seems like it was filmed in canada yes <laughs> a baby canada yeah baby canada well for anybody who hasn't seen this i think this is something that uh is a must see it resonated with us we were talking about it forever I think so. It's scary. I think so. It's scary I as think fuck. So. It's just to say it's all about demons, right? Demonology. Yes. Oh, these little critters and demons. It's uh, you never <laughs> want these guys coming up your blanket in the middle of the night, you know. And there's different types of demons, right? There's like a pack of demons. There's like a larger demon. Yeah, the dog dies. <laughs> <laughs> always a dog oh, dying in these movies, It's always man. sad, hey, though. It's always sad when a dog dies, man. And these scripts are like, hey, make sure a dog dies in this in the 80s. It's like, tss, tss, tss. What was his it. name? Angus, dude. Yes. They had yes, a really cool yeah. rocket ship, too. There's a rocket, rocket ship that was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, man. Be beautiful house and, and definitely creepy movie. Um, and you know, uh, we're lucky with the outreach we do. We never know who we're going to get on the show. Yes. But this one is uh, one of probably the major, you know, lead players in this film, an all-star uh, captain of the ship. Oh, he's the he um, is the El Capitan. Yes, straight from you know Budapest and Canada. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, also shares the September 11th birthday. Tiber, the director of the yes. film, is on the show Let's from the gate in the gate too. <laughs> What was your initial thoughts when you got the script and, and how were you approached to direct uh, this this masterful horror? I mean, you really uh, did such an amazing job with this one. And, um, you know, just curious about what your initial thoughts were. Originally, the way that this evolved was that I was promoting a script in L.A. and going around to producers and trying to get it done. And it was a bit controversial because it was a kind of uh, a tween kind of movie but it was very violent. It was about kids in a world where there was no adults, and yeah. Uh, yeah. which would be totally acceptable today. But back then, <laughs> it was kind of extreme, you know. Right. I had gotten a lot of intro, a lot of meetings from it, and people yeah. said things like raise the age to eighteen, cut back the violence. Uh, you know, as a post-apocalyptic story, I was a bit of a punk, and I just said, "Fuck you, crazy man! No, this is stupid." You know, like yes. why would I do that? You know, kind of stuff. <laughs> yes, <laughs> fight back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like you know, love it. Being from Canada, you don't really know how things work exactly, and I had a bit of cred from a short that I had done. I had a meeting with Spielberg set up because of the short. Mm. Nice. And these meetings sort of came from the heat of that and all this kind of stuff, you know. So I was a bit, maybe a bit arrogant, I guess. There's one particular producer, this guy, John Kemeny, 
who I think was at Fox, a 20th Century Fox. That's where his offices were. You know, he gave me that same spiel kind of like, well, you know, we like your stuff, Sonny, but, you know, it's just too violent, and can you change the age of the kids? Oh, and, man. You know, it just didn't make sense to me, and it does, you know, still, even today, I would probably say the same thing, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 And then yeah. a couple of months later, I get a call out of the blue from this same producer that had sort of turned it down, so he, he, he wants me to come to the office immediately, you know, he wants to meet you. His secretary was calling, you know? Yeah, and so I, I rush over there thinking, "Oh my God, he's changed his mind." <laughs> you know, like, and uh, so I get in, and he says, uh, "No, no, we're talking about. Yeah, I want you to direct something for me." Oh, okay. Mm. And he gave me two scripts, and one of them was the Wraith. Do you remember? Yes, you remember that of movie? Mm. Yeah, and yeah. Then, awesome. uh, there was the Gate, and I read both. I was much more interested in the Gate as sort of a coming of age story, you know, that had a lot of kind of fairy tale roots, you know. I was drawn to that very strongly. He just said, "Which one do you want to do?" You know, like wow. I guess he was impressed with the short and maybe my oh, attitude. Yeah. That, I love that. You know, <laughs> maybe I kind of believed in. <clears throat> yeah, you know, like as a director, you kind of believe in your project. You, you, yeah. you. Uh, you know, so he respected that, and you know, he's he's that kind of producer. I mean, he's done a lot of big things, like he did Quest for Fire, wow, mm. an apprenticeship of Duddy Kravitz, Ice great. Castles. He's done some big stuff, yeah. you know. So then that's great. So then, like, how is it like working with Stephen Dorff and you know Lewis Tripp and? Yeah, that was all great, and it it's sort of. I think a, a more important part of the setup for this is really what happened was that production was scheduled for the fall of that year, I think it's mm -hmm. 85, 86. Mm -hmm. For some reason, some financial thing, they said, oh no, we can't go ahead, we're gonna have to do it in the new year. And I'm, oh my God, another, you know, some more bullshit. And, <laughs> and so it turned out, they said, hey, you know what? We want you guys to stay on I'd already been looking for a special effects person. I was looking around and I was hooked up with Randy already. And he said, well, we'll have you guys stay on till the new year. We'll, you know, give you some money and you guys can plan. And that's really was the key to it all. Just having that much time to plan, you know? Yeah. Wow. Great. You know, casting started and we had a general casting where we really put it out there. You know, I saw I think hundreds of kids, uh, wow. you know, then came to L.A. to do kind of screen tests, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, we screen tested like a dozen kids and, you know, unknowns mostly. Kids wow, that yeah. age, they're not really that known, you know. Yeah. And I was kind of moving towards kids that didn't have a lot of experience because I noticed that kids that had a lot of experience already at around 10 or 11, 12, you know, they kind of had, they fall into a, a method that for their acting, that's maybe more adult like, mm -hmm. you know, mm. I was, I was trying to go for some sort of sincere innocence a naive kind of quality I was looking for, I guess. Steven had that cause he didn't have all that much experience yet. Yeah, and same with great. Louis Tripp, same thing, wow. you know, all the cast, really. Except some of yeah. the older kids, you know, they'd already had some experience and that worked out fine. Yeah. I feel yeah, like there's... prep time, prep time is like really no no longer a thing, right? From a lot of the interviews we've done is like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's like out the window now, right? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's that's the, the bane of my life in most uh... of the cases. I think it's um, uh, the respect for the process has eroded. You know, it was bad back in the day of, of this project, you know, in the 80s, it was already bad. And now it's even worse, kind of, you know. Yeah. In these kind of medium budget movies, I'm sure the big budget movies, they got a lot, you know, but even they're rushed, too. So, you know, it's all relative. It's uh, if you're given a certain amount of time, you're going to need more time, you know. Yeah. And so many of these scenes stand out to us, even from like the get go, uh, you know, from the kids throwing the party in their house, even the opening up dream sequence to like the poor dog dying and, and the mom, and that sh that, yeah, and the mom. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's really, <laughs> really like there, there's so many visual moments that are really vivid and, and awesome. Like, were there any like fun stories shooting some of those moments too? The way that the, it was organized, it sort of dictated certain, I guess some of the things that you see that you feel like they worked out really well. We had a limited time, of course. It was still a very low-budget movie, relative. 
we divided our workload into there was the main unit that would shoot everything, the drama, the narrative of the whole thing. And then there was a second unit that would plan a series of effects shots. So I think we were shooting for 25 days. And the idea was that every second day they would do a shot. Oh. Ah. But of course they needed the kids as well. Yeah. Oh yeah. So they would they would prepare all day and a half and then at the end of that second day we would rush in there with the kids and do the effect with the kids cuz it's all in camera mostly, you know. There was yeah. a, some some blue yeah. screen work, but you can really tell that there's a lot of that uh, trick perspective work that was done and that right. requires the people, you yeah. know, and it requires rehearsal as well. We were going to so, ask that. It looks really complicated. You know, like... Yeah, like people acting comping. backwards yeah. or acting slow at half speed, uh, you know, all kinds of tricks. Being in the foreground, like 20 feet up in the air, but on a ledge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, and that, that we were very inspired by that film, uh, Darby O'Gill and Little People. Yeah, they use a lot of trick perspective. You know, it's a film of leprechauns, you know. Yeah. And it's uh, known as Sean Connery's first film, I think. Oh. And there is nice. some singing in it. You know how out. back in the 60s they used to have, like, people would break into a song. It's a number. <laughs> I love that. Them, you know? Yeah. It's one of those, you know. Oh, that's right up my alley. <laughs> that's so great. <laughs> we uh, we have some that. shorts where we bust into songs, so we got to see this. <laughs> I love the musical aspect. That's really cool, though. And, you know, I was so fortunate to have Randy working with me who... You know, it was a lot of his ideas about how to do these shots. You know, I didn't write the script, but I had a lot of involvement in it and all the gags. And, you know, so we spent months with sitting in the same room with Randy, drawing storyboards and conceiving how we would do these shots. We picked, uh, you know, like, I don't know, there's like 20 or 30 shots that are special in the movie. Each had a way of doing them and kind of like rehearsed it in our minds. <laughs> and then when we got there, okay, boom, 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 boom. Every second day there would be a shot, you know, for yeah. the, the, the second unit is like, whoa. It was like, you know, well organized. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it seems like it would have to be, you know, like it just seems like such yeah. a massive undertaking and a great accomplishment, this movie. It's amazing. Yeah. And yeah, then, no, we were think, curious how, like, the monsters were made and, like, the decision to, like, make them look like that because they're so unique, you know, like the the facial expressions and everything. Well, you know, at yeah. the te what, what technology allowed at the time, mm -hmm. you know, the sort of mechanical technology, you could say, and what we could afford, what we could get away with. That's really what the, the, the real craft comes in when you say, well, what can we get away with? Like... Yeah. Will this shot be uh, an articulated puppet or is this just a yeah. uh, rubber, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, those kind of decisions. Randy was an expert at that kind of stuff, having worked on some big movies. And he was able to really guide the planning in that direction. Like, okay, well, we think we can get away with just a puppet here because it's going to be a quick shot. Nobody will know, you know. Yeah. Or this one, we're going to have to do something elaborate. Well, we have people in suits and do the force perspective or the trick perspective stuff. Those are the decisions that were made that were made correctly, you know, at the time. Nice. Is that the, as a, was that your? I can't yeah. remember if I answered no, your question. Yeah, that, <laughs> that was great. Yeah. Um, I guess also too. Yeah, we're wondering like, what's one of your favorite moments or moments? You know, filming it. Some of the diehard fans of this movie would love to know. Well, you know, it was quite a while ago. The moments where you kind of separate the movie from the regular fare, where the film gets elevated like little sort of intimate moments between, uh, let's say, uh, Stevendorf and the monster, where mm. the monster comes and touches him. Yeah, that yeah. That to me was a really important, interesting moment in the movie that sort of created this connection between the monster and him. That was one uh, when he gouges out his eye, when he's in the room by himself and all that chaos is going around. The stuff of nightmares and making it... Uh, very, I would say, immersive in a way, you know, where you try to make things feel like the audience is experiencing them in a dream. Those are the moments that I savor. Yeah. 
Yeah, um, I love it. The other little thing is uh, the Barbie doll gets stabbed, and <laughs> he stabs the eye of the of his friend. That to me was also a fun moment. <laughs> and uh, you know, we had different moments where they told us to cut it out, and we could mm. put some back, and this many frames, and that many frames. You know, it was all like, yeah, it was tricky stuff. The whole PG thirteen thing was oh uh, yeah, a big deal. To me, a story about kids that dig a hole in their backyard has got to be PG-13. I mean, that's the concept that kind of got lost in Gate 2 because they were forcing mm-hmm. us to make it an R movie. Yeah, yeah. I see. Really, you know, like I always, it was sort of against the grain for me was to make it an R movie and that's kind of like twisted it out of shape in a way. Yeah. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah, the, there's yeah. so much like safety, suburban perfect life vibes in this yeah. film and then yeah. and then quickly goes to shit with demonology and you know <laughs> uh his parents uh you know and as a, like you said as a kid it's almost you know you're watching this and, and, and you're right like their parents are not even that involved i love they and just like this... leave right away in the movie like yeah 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah and, and, well it's and, you know the old uh peanuts kind of concept where you, know, yeah. you never yeah. see the adults and you're, rah, 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 you just hear the you know <laughs> yeah yeah i love that and then yeah, when you do see the dad know. his face melts because he's the monster yeah. it's great oh my god <laughs> uh, yeah those scenes really uh stuck with us it's really great because it's like i said it's so safe and and you know um suburban like and then it instantly becomes uh just so so twisted in a good way and and also to your credit you know it's in the team like it's amazing that you can pull off so much visual scary stuff and keep it pg-13 you yeah know? and, and that's it true. leaves so much more uh open to the illusion of the mind too and and you know leaving that movie and just going to bed thinking like holy shit <laughs> you know could this happen to us that was you us know? <laughs> was it this. fun to like uh and i guess you sort of answered this but it just a little bit more on like the actors themselves dealing with the monsters i guess a lot of that was some of it was trick um you know camera yeah work too. Well, yeah you know, they, they were i don't think there was you know yeah. it was always it, they, they were acting you know <laughs> yeah. that's yeah. what yeah. uh they were good actors yeah and uh, yeah like Steven, against nothing right yeah yeah Pretty much. Sometimes the puppets. There were some puppets, and those, that, yeah. you know, that helps when you have a puppet. Uh, helps yeah. tremendously. Yeah. It was a technical exercise for them, and they pulled it off very well. Like, Stephen was like, I think at the time I described it, like, he was very, uh, I would say, flexible, you know? Like, if I, if, if I wanted him to change his performance in some way, he would just snap to it and just change it, you know, like, just like a professional, like wow. he was, Beautiful. he was very good at, at that. And he understood everything that we were doing and he was very motivated. He was really wanting to work all the time, like never tired, never, you know, how kids get, you know, they kind of lose interest or whatever their, their attention span is maybe his was always like you know very much like an adult wow like he was always disappointed when we <laughs> rapped you know, oh, like, a true artist right work. there yeah, yeah that's great yeah, yeah yeah if there was one monster if there was one monster that you would bring back now which one would it be oh i think the minions you know yeah. no, he's not one monster but well he is like a <laughs> he's a, the part of a hive to me that's true. uh yeah much scarier to have like a very big um uh, collection of beings that are somehow controlled uh, i guess uh a bit like lord of the rings they have things like that in there yeah is there anything else you want to like share that you're working on or anything yeah, that we love can to kinda, know yeah look out. oh yeah. you know I've, I've sort of transitioned to uh action thrillers crime dramas in the last couple of years oh yeah. nice i yeah. had a recent movie called black warrant with tom berenger yeah and jeff nice. fahey and Cam Giganet. Those are a lot of fun to do, a little different. There, I, there was even a period where I did a couple of Hallmark movies in a row. Those were fun because yeah. it's always very kind of like a, a lighter workload for the technical part of the filmmaking, and you can focus on the acting. You know, that to me was working with the actors is to me is the ultimate reward mm. yeah. in these yeah. ventures. Also, I've always, to my detriment, to my career's detriment, I've always been. Uh, wanting to to have an eclectic career that you don't just focus on one thing but i think the business really wants you to stay in your lane 
for yeah. most of these sort of middling type careers, you want to stay in a lane, but I can't seem to <laughs> to stay in the lane. I want to keep good, moving though. around. That's good. Like, That's I'm, good stuff. I'm just interested in all kinds of genres. I like moving around. And I think you yeah. can contribute because genres cross into each other all the time. Mm-hmm. And when yeah. you have experience in one, you the next project you do, you bring that experience along with you and inject a, you know something else into it. It's this sort of crossing between genres that I really enjoy. The uh, the thing that I, in, uh, I I noted was that you guys call yourself the Bobos or oh Bobo Touch yeah Bobo Touch well that's my nickname no wow. <laughs> no really? yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah my wife calls me Bobo and so does my brother yeah <laughs> no <laughs> yeah <laughs> no I'm, I'm, I'm the real Bobo he, I was gonna say oh, you're the real God. Bobo <laughs> you're the originator. <laughs> Oh. What's the language the little monster says? Atalaka Bataka? <laughs> Yo, there's one wow. scene where there's like a sick fucking snap zoom, right? I get it goes he like the little monsters on the top and he's looking down, I guess, at the characters and it's just this like beautiful like slow yeah. dolly in and he's just like the little monster staring at him. It's so it was a such a prick, beautiful shot. Yeah, it's a, yeah. You know, a lot of small little prick monsters don't get given a nice <laughs> shot like that. Yeah, you know? they gave the prick monster his own little time to shine, you know? I, and, you know, yeah. another thing that I really love about this film, especially after this interview, is not only that we have our father Bobo, um, yeah. but we do, you know, there's so much rehearsal that went into this movie. I mean, I wouldn't have even known that, you know, half the stuff that went into what he said. Uh, yeah. Is how it actually panned out. Well, the thing about it, like, if you think if they had like you know like a month of prep or two weeks of prep time, like what is it yeah, now? Like, soundstage. Yeah, like what is it now? Like like two days <laughs> to yeah. shoot a feature. Yeah, I mean, unless it's, just, it's John Wick. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah, then, like, I guess he's like, yeah, if it's like a major big budget, then I guess you do have the time. I'm sure, a even bit. those are less. Yeah, yeah, too. yeah, yeah. It's crazy, but yeah, this film was really good overall. You could tell teamwork from the yeah. cinematography to the. The props and and the lighting and testing and and yeah just uh, and and the stop motion I mean come on stop motion yeah that, you know, that wasn't killer clowns that was also in a lot of other movies yeah man. and also like him working with that guy <laughs> him working with the special effects guy was huge it's true yeah I mean that's like you know like he was talking about a true collaboration right there like mapping out every single shot you yeah. know when to use a rubber guy when to use a, a blue screen. Um, it's true. Just Teamwork like, makes the dream work. Oh, yeah. Is that Wu-Tang? <laughs> Was that a little Wu-Tang you just said there? Uh, you know what you're done. <laughs> also, you know another thing, too? Let's talk about the sound design because we are, you know, sound and audio and picture people. Yeah, yeah, Dude, remember, yeah. like, the moaning? Remember hearing, like, the moaning that was, like, layered in there? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, and, of the little monster guys coming uh, out. I think, yeah. The, Even, the like, when you hear it this, off camera, yeah. Yeah. This is one of those movies that if you haven't seen it, it's amazing. If you yes, have please, seen it, you should go back out. and rewatch it. You should definitely rewatch this. Yes, and it's also great to show people that have never seen it. Like, I think even you know, you know, as a as a fellow parent, yeah, I, I think this would be a cool kind of first horror film to see. It's 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 all about kids too. It would be a really great. Crazy. It would be a great to do the kid test again on this, just to like yes. play it raw for them and just see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, everything seems innocent again, similar to the Poltergeist vibe, and then shit <laughs> yeah, just goes yeah. upside down. You know, love and, it. And I'm so glad that we were able to have this, you know, special interview today, and yes, it really thank educated you, me. You know, I, I love this movie, and now I can walk away even learning more about it. Yeah. Know? So yeah, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. And uh, we're on all the social media platform at Bobo Touch on Instagram, Facebook, all the platforms, and all the shit. Yeah, so, yeah. You know check us out. We have a web series. We have some sketches. We're always putting out some fun stuff. So, thank you guys, and uh, some new stuff coming up next month. Yeah, stay tuned and stay be tuned. healthy. <laughs> <laughs>